Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my show Future Friday. In today's episode, we're gonna take a look at the emerging field of wave power. So let's dive right into it. So what it is? It's very simple. It's a renewable energy source, same as tidal energy the, on which I made a video yesterday. And uh, tidal is done by gravity as in its moon power, moon and solar power. This is wind power basically. So that's what it is. That's what's causing the wave. Of course, there are other effects also that like a rotation of the earth, the Coriolis effect, and there are other things. But primarily, you can think of it as wave power as in being wind energy. So why we have so much interest into it? First, it's an untapped market. Like let's say today you want to jump into renewable energy market and you want to make uh, let's say solar powers. Yeah, you have you're gonna have some serious competition. Solar power is the uh, I made a video about that. It's almost reaching price parity. So everybody has already jumped into it because in next coming five to fifteen years, it's gonna become the way to produce electricity. Not because of anybody cares about the environment, but simply because it's cheap. People like cheap electricity. So in if you want to compete in that market, you're gonna have tough time. This market is completely new, untested, and. Uh, it just began so there is a very large emerging market here second is 24 into 7 this is crucial very few um, renewable energy like biomass and uh, geothermal geothermal i made a video about that is the only one that can provide uh, 24 into 7 power this can you know do that so how does it work well there are many 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 designs but i'm gonna narrow it down to two core aspects first my personal favorite is oscillating water column basically it's not uh, it's using the wave the motion of wave that is going up and down to create a column of air moving back and forth basically first it creates a high pressure air that moves out and then uh, while the wave falls it creates a partial vacuum that drags air in based on that wind power there is a turbine running that turbine is running the generator benefit nothing is so much nothing that is like a uh, pressures expensive complicated they are all in the air rather so you can easily do the maintenance without even needing to go into the water and the only thing that is submerged in water it's concrete which is relatively cheap so this is one of the plant and then we have other many 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 people who are trying to make it work designs like this where you are physically making the wave work as in the generator to wave there is a direct line of uh, mechanical connection in this sort of power plant air is doing the motion like your wave is being converted into in, uh, air waves as in air power and then air power is being utilized but in mechanical system it's they are trying to directly harness it benefit inherently it gives more power like uh, one of these buoys can give you upwards of 20 to 30 megawatts so these are the two primary systems. Like, of course, if you go into Wikipedia and read up, there are hundreds of designs, but these are the two primary components. One uses wave to make air, uh, you know, energize the air. Using that air, they get extracts the energy. Second system is directly using mechanical force. So what are the cons of the system? First, it is a very big hazard. This is an even bigger hazard than what you we call uh, tidal systems, simply because it's uh, it can be laid out anywhere uh, basically anywhere in the sea so that creates a scenario where many of them can be created put into place where they are directly into the contact with shipping lanes and marine life so these are quite destructive to both of them not only shipping lanes but also uh, marine life form so that's kind of uh, problematic second this is very weak this is crucial aspect tidal energy is very very substantial as in you can actually power cities with it this on the other hand it's nowhere near the actual raw power of tidal wave power at best case scenario i have linked the study below uh, based on NOAA study is barely uh, two terawatt so let's say at best case scenario it's 10 terawatt but that's not enough like right now as i talk to you i have already made a video about solar farms we already are in a position where there are solar farms that creates one terawatt of power per hour. So suffice to say, we have crossed a point where uh, solar can provide a lot of power. Heck, it can run a country. And I'm not talking about like covering everything uh, in solar panel. I'm talking about one to 10% of land area in, uh, you know, uninhabited land area, basically desert or things like that. You're going to get the power for the nation. Only problem after that would be how do you power it at night? So all things considered, this is very weak. Now, all the designs that I showed to you, like they are idiotically expensive. 
they are very expensive they make a uh, title look cheap so like these sort of buoy designs they barely lasted five uh, months like some of the early designs that were tested they broke down in two months and they landed on the seafloor which created a hazard for uh, fishermen because they have they have net that goes very close to the surface having giant metal object you know causes a trouble for them so these are the con of it like this is a very rough diagram from NOAA's uh, that they are showing how much energy do we have as you can see like uh, in this area of USA you're barely getting five kilowatt per meter square that, that's not enough just flat out not enough and not to mention the places which has a lot of power it's not very easy to access like this area red it has a uh, upwards of 60 but not easy to access for that reason cons are kind of high on this lack of power lack of raw power as in like even if you extract uh, all this power that you have it's not gonna be that much and it's idiotically expensive and not let's not even go into the maintenance aspect of these things so what we can expect in the future now this is where things get interesting if the designs are made that are long lasting relatively speaking as in it should last upwards of 30 to 50 years then this starts to, the price starts to make sense as in people who invest into these things will get a profit that is the crucial aspect nobody is going to do it if it does not make a profit no government uh, no private individual this and oscillating water column design like this design that uh, you can type artificial blowhole and you will start getting a lot of this design all it does is creates a column of air that moves back and forth so inherently even if let's say fish ends up in this area nothing will happen to the fish this can become a coral reef nothing will happen to the structure since there is no moving part and it has almost no uh, detrimental effect to the sea life to shipping lanes or things like that and it, this plant that is a uh, the oldest it was connected to the grid in 2001 so suffice to say this is very time tested technology simply the best benefit it has that this concrete structure can easily last 50 to 100 years that's not an issue we know how to build uh, sea seaworthy concrete that's the cheap part and everything that does wear out like turbines valves electronics they are above sea as in you can simply go to a boat land here fix these things and boom so this design has the largest potential not only because like uh, it does have a one consequence as compared to direct mechanical systems it does produce relatively less power but given the fact that it can last years and years and decades and decades and decades there is no comparison over over time this can you know out uh, outlive all other systems that are direct uh, c systems and not to mention uh, this while it does not have enough power to do the raw power lifting of the you know whole grid system where you can make the whole grid renewable this can provide a very substantial add-on to basically uh, a grid where you are running on renewables let's say you have a coastal city that is running on uh, solar power on the night you can rely on this like uh, this while they do not provide too much power as in like this one was barely half a megawatt and they did provide lots of lots of megawatt to the grid but inherently like per hour it's not very powerful and it does have a lot of fluctuation so there has to be some way to store the electricity i could think of one way where you have instead of ac generator you put a dc generator and directly link giant capacitors to it that way if uh, waves do fluctuate the power output will be stabilized so this can add as a very good uh, stimulant or a catalyst if you will to any existing renewable energy it's like small but it's trickle charging basically your grid will always have some power coming to from these sort of systems so i am very hopeful for uh, oscillating water column design every other design i'm like no flat out no like there are designs that are that have uh, buoys that are going like this and there are hydraulic coupling that is like moving the hydraulic fluid and, and then creating energy awesome just ask the cost of it so for this reason for the simplicity of this design and the fact that it has almost no uh, effect on the marine life i am really comfortable with this sort of design and this can add the shoreline you can easily create this on your shoreline and you can provide a, not you're not gonna run a city with it but you can provide a supplemental power which is always nice so this was my presentation on wave energy i hope you liked it or learned from it in that case please leave a like if you didn't eh, dislike it and i would su suggest you like leave a comment what you want to see in the next episode of future friday and as always, please subscribe, press the bell icon if you are free. And as always, thank you.